Good morning. On behalf of the entire university community, welcome to the 2020 winter commencement at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Thank you to all in attendance today for being a part of this special celebration. We are gathered here to celebrate an important milestone in the lives of our newest graduates of MSOE, so let me be the first to say congratulations. It is also worth noting that February Leap Day, today is our last day in February, is also Black History Month. So it is fitting that we remember the first African American alumnus of MSOE. Mr. Clarence LaRue was born on December 20th, 1923, and graduated from MSOE with an Associate of Applied Sciences degree in 1949. His picture appears in the book, MSOE, The First 100 Years. And Mr. LaRue is the individual on your left in this image. Mr. LaRue retired as a metallurgy lab specialist in Carmichael, California, and was a strong supporter of MSOE through his many gifts that he made to MSOE's annual fund before his passing. While we recognize that there is still much more to accomplish when it comes to providing educational equity and opportunities for all, we celebrate Mr. LaRue for blazing a path for other African Americans to follow. Let's begin today's proceeding with an invocation led by Mr. Kip Kussman, Dean of Students. Dean Kussman. Lord God, we ask for your almighty hand to be upon our graduates today. Bless their lives from this day on with goodness and love. Help them to stay true to themselves, to use their gifts wisely, to never give up, and to embrace their futures with hope, tenacity, and great love. We ask that you protect them, inspire them, and continue to lead them to all their successes, and to always instill great joy in their hearts. Amen. For the official Milwaukee School of Engineering welcome, I'm pleased to introduce to you the fifth president of MSOE, Dr. John Walls. Dr. Walls. Good morning, everyone, and let me add my own welcome to the Winter 2020 Commencement Ceremony for MSOE. Uh, I'd like to just start this morning by recognizing, first of all, the members of our governing board of regents who have joined us and are on stage. I'll call each name and I'll ask that person to rise and remain standing and we'll have a round of applause at the end. We'll start with the chairman of the Board of Regents, is Dr. Dan Mosseri. We also have Dr. Kendall Brunig and Dr. Eckhart Groman. How about a round of applause for these folks? I also want to recognize uh, so several members of our leadership team, um, and again, I'll ask each person to rise as I call their name and remain standing until at the end. You've already met our Vice President of Academics, Dr. Eric Baumgartner. Our Vice President of Marketing and Community Engagement is Mr. Saj Thatchenkeri. Vice President of Enrollment Management and Student Affairs is Dr. Tim Valley. Vice President of Operations is Mr. Kevin Morin and Vice President of Development and Alumni Affairs is Mr. Jeff Snow. How about a round of applause for these individuals? <laughs> Commencement is a time for us to formally recognize and reward the hard work and the dedication of our students. Their conferral of a degree is without a doubt one of the most cherished ceremonies of an academic, academic institution. And I, along with our faculty and our staff and our Board of Regents, are honored that you have joined us today. To you students, I offer you my sincerest congratulations on your accomplishment. Receiving a degree from any university is a noteworthy achievement. Receiving that degree with an institution like MSOE, with our rigor and tradition, is truly special and is something for which you should forever be proud. So I know that you're excited to get started with the next phase of your life, but this is probably the last time I'll talk to you, so I have to pass on just two quick words of advice. First, do not let your education stop here. Always continue to learn. Our world is changing faster than ever before, and success will only come to those who can continue to learn and to adapt. So when I was in college studying engineering one or two years ago, all the engineering majors had to learn a computer programming language called Fortran. It was really the, I see some people shaking their heads, so some of you know this too, right? 
It was the only programming language I ever learned, and I actually continued to write programs in Fortran throughout much of my career, both in industry and then later in academia. And indeed, I think today I could probably sit down and crank out a very simple Fortran code. But does anyone think that the students who are graduating today, 30 years from now, will be using the same computational tools that they're learning now? My guess is that within five years, and probably even less than that, many of today's tools will be obsolete, replaced by ones that are powerful, more powerful, and much faster. Today, not only are we seeing technological breakthroughs occurring at faster and faster rates, but the impact of those technologies gets greater and greater. Advances in fields like artificial intelligence and machine learning and augmented reality will transform the way we work, we live, communicate, and travel. Most of your students, most of your children, and indeed many of your graduates will one day work in a job that today does not even exist. That is our new reality. And the only way that you can be successful in such a world is to continue to learn and to adapt. Fortunately, each of you has been provided with a tremendous education that not only makes you ready to take on the challenges of today, but also prepares you to learn about and address whatever challenge may confront you down the road. So incidentally, to close the story, a while back I was talking to one of our recent software engineering graduates, and I asked him, do you ever use Fortran much? And he looked at me, and his answer was, what's Fortran? And I thought, boy, I'm getting old, feeling my age. And my second piece of advice is that no matter how marvelous technological breakthroughs may seem, technology by itself can solve nothing. Being successful, whether in your job or in your life, still requires using basic human skills. A year or so ago, our university worked through a comprehensive strategic, strategic planning process in which we laid out a vision for our university and a set of actions and strategies for getting us there. It was a wonderful and rewarding experience, and it brought together people and ideas from across our campus, our faculty, our staff, our regions, our alumni, our corporate partners, and very importantly, our students. In fact, I would say that some of the best ideas in the plan came from the students who were members of the planning committee. And as part of that work, we developed what we call the MSOE mindset. It consists of four simple qualities that we want each and every one of our graduates to demonstrate. And our mindset is that MSOE graduates are leaders of character, passionate learners, responsible professionals, and value creators. You'll note that our mindset says nothing about being able to solve engineering equations or write complex computer code or perform a detailed economic analysis or start an IV on a pediatric patient. That's because we know that by being a graduate of this university, you have mastered the skills required of your discipline. You would not be sitting here earning that degree if this were not the case, and those skills would never fail you. But always remember that it's the other things, things like your character, your understanding of the responsibilities of your position, your passion for always wanting to learn more, your ability to not only solve complex problems, but to create things of meaning and value, and very importantly, your ability to communicate with, work with, and empathize with others. It is those things that will determine whether you are truly successful. Each of you has a wonderful future ahead of you, and I wish you nothing but the very best in whatever direction you choose to go next. And while you may be leaving us today, we will always consider you part of the great MSOE family. And I hope that you will forever be proud to call yourself an MSOE alum. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker for this morning, Mr. Tim Sheehy. Mr. Sheehy is president of the Metropolitan Milwaukee Association of Commerce, or MMAC, whose stated mission is to improve Metro Milwaukee as a place to invest capital, grow business, and create jobs. Mr. Sheehy serves on the board of the Milwaukee De Development Corporation, which is an MMAC affiliate. 
He is a past chair of the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives, serves as a director of the State of Wisconsin Investment Board, is on the boards of several educational organizations, and is a past board member of Summerfest. He has been appointed by three Wisconsin governors to various uh, state commissions. Prior to joining MMAC, Mr. Shee was a legislative assistant to Representative Jim Sensenbrenner and a recipient of the Lyndon Baines Johnson Congressional Internship. He also served as a Ford Foundation Fellow on Regional Sustainable Development. Mr. Sheehy graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison with a bachelor's degree in political science, and he was a scholarship member of UW's Division I baseball team. Please join me in giving a warm MSOE welcome to MMAC President, Mr. Tim Sheehy. Good morning. <clears throat> it's a privilege to address you as MSOE graduates, and it's an honor to stand here in front of your family and friends. Um, but I'd like to start this morning with an energy efficient celebration of your graduation. So if you'll follow with me, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you all to make one clap in unison. Got it? One, two, three. Perfect. Um, now let me get down to work uh, with my thoughts. Uh, and you heard Dr. Walls talk about uh, MSOE, and when I think about uh, MSOE, MSOE here uh, from Milwaukee's perspective, I think about a university that should have the tagline, Big Thoughts Made Practical. So my goal this morning with you is to share some earned advice that mirrors that learning. I've got five ideas uh, that I'm going to share with you. Hopefully you'll find one that you can take with you uh, that will be of value. If you find more than one, I get some bonus points here. So this also, unfortunately, is my graduation gift to you today. So I apologize up front that there's no big pronouncement from this commencement speaker about reducing your college debt. Um, I have, still have my own kids I'm trying to uh, work that out with. Um, I was a 1981 graduate. My youngest is getting his undergraduate degree uh, this year, and my oldest uh, will finish her MBA next year. But when I started my career uh, in Washington, D.C., um, I was working on a typewriter. I then transitioned uh, to the marvel, I thought at the time, which was a screen that stored words, uh, but only worked in the office. Uh, and now, like most of us on the stage, I've got a screen that's always on and one that's always on me. My first phone, when it became mobile, I carried it like groceries from my car in a bag. Uh, I then moved to one that flipped open, uh, and then I used one that was named for a fruit, uh, and now I use one by a company that's named after a fruit. My exposure to TV, uh, like some others on this stage, came with only three channels in black and white, uh, and then transformed to real life color. I subsequently matured to yelling at the TV, uh, especially when the Packers were playing badly. And now, with the help of my kids, I've learned in a calm voice that I can request any TV program I want out of the nine million choices uh, that are displayed. So I share this background to let you know that I won't be offended if you listen to my advice and say, okay, Boomer, uh, it's what I hear at home all the time. So here are five ideas um, I hope you can apply going forward. Um, I've spent most of my career interfacing with the White House, the State House, and the Courthouse uh, representing our members. And I have really come to understand Winston Churchill's words that democracy is the worst form of government except when you compare it to all others. So my first point to you all is that this is your democracy. Democracy is not a perpetual motion machine run by some unseen force. It doesn't operate on autopilot. Democracy governs the country, the state, the county, the city, 
and the community that you all live in, and it will not work without your engagement as citizens. Citizenship is your dedication to the common welfare of the community, even at the cost of your individual interests. So practice civic virtue until it becomes a habit. Consider the welfare of your neighbors. Get informed, participate, vote. A citizen-led democracy is the debt that you owe those who came before you, and it is the gift that you give to those who will follow you. We all stand on someone's shoulders, and for most of us, that means we've started with a better view, a view enhanced here by folks like Eckhart Grohman, across the street by Diane and Dwight Derricks, in this building by the Kearns. Giving back to your alma mater is a great civic gesture. You like that one? Okay. <laughs> Giving back to your alma mater is a great civic gesture. But most forms of civic virtue only require taking individual responsibility to act in the common welfare of the community. For the past 30 years, through elections, baby boomers have helped shape U.S. policy. That is a fact. It's not a political statement. Donald Trump is the oldest first-term president in U.S. history. His slipper-wearing, nap-taking Commerce Secretary is 82. The Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, is 77. The year he graduated from the University of Louisville, his tuition, his annual tuition, was $330. Keeping this bipartisan, Speaker Pelosi is 79, Senator Sanders is 78, and Vice President Biden is 77. All were born before the vaccine or the bikini were discovered. Now, this is not a riff on age. This is a statement about the leadership legislating on net neutrality, cyber warfare, and Facebook. This is the group addressing an economy where skills have the shortest lifespan in our working history. This is who is opining on inequality, endless wars, climate change, and student debt. As graduates, you are part of what Time Magazine called the youth quake. Millennials now are the largest living generation, and they make up the largest age group in the workforce. As Generation Z, you join them as the most racially diverse in U.S. history. Your world is one revolutionized by startups, shaped by culture-shifting tastes, and driven by an enduring appetite for social media that has transformed human interaction. As Charlotte Alter's new book title notes, you are the ones we've been waiting for. And like most things today, generational change and civic responsibility comes with a warning label. After 600 years of existence, the Roman Empire came to its demise in 1590. In 1776, the same year the U.S. was founded, English historian Edward Gibbon began writing his noted work on the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. It is his conclusion about the citizens of Athens that I share with you today as a present warning to this democracy when what the Athenians wanted most was the freedom from responsibility, then Athens ceased to be free. This is your democracy, and your engagement as citizens will determine the next chapter in this 244-year-old experiment. Advice piece number two, wear a helmet. I'm sure that you've been encouraged by these words. Work hard and your potential will be recognized. You're going to be treated fairly. Promotions are going to be based on merit. You're going to work for an equal opportunity employer. I hope all of this comes true in your future, but it won't always. At some point, you're going to be treated unfairly. 
you're going to be offended and you're going to be disappointed. Don't stew in it. If I gave you $86,400 this morning and by this afternoon you'd lost 120 of it, how long would you spend worrying about it or looking for it? There are 86,400 seconds in a day. Next time you're disappointed, don't waste time worrying about it. Rather, consider this thought by James Baldwin. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. Life is tough, wear a helmet, face it. Number three, and admittedly this may sound odd, don't go to work. You know that uh, circles uh, are concentric if they have a different radii but the same center. If you can define your personal center in the concentric decisions that you will be making about your career, you won't have to go to work. Here's how this equation works. First, find out what you're good at doing, and most importantly, find out what you're passionate about doing. Except for the very few, it's a lot of trial and error to honestly find your career passion. But this is the most important discovery for you. Second, think about what the world needs. What challenges do you see that need to be met? These can be big or they can be small, but which ones that you identify overlap with your passion? Third, what will someone pay you to do or fund you to do? What is a passion connected to a need without funding? It's a dream. And we want you to pursue your dreams, but you're going to need to eat along the way. You do want to get paid for your passion. But pay alone is not a good guide. Twice in my career, I've come close to accepting job offers that in an honest reflection would have traded my passion for pay. I would have had to go to work. So my career advice, find your center, and you will always have a passion that pays. And from my experience, it sure beats working. Number four very practical. Make a list. Over my career, I've worked for more than a dozen CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And here is one of my success tips from that experience. These highly successful leaders are list makers. My observation, list making is simple, it's effective, and it's practical. Making a list reinforces the discipline of acting on the most important challenges or opportunities. Once completed, crossing the task off celebrates a capacity for accomplishment. So pretty simple advice, when you leave here, start making your own list. And fifth and last, what you do is not who you are. I truly envy all of you the awesome journey that you have in front of you. It admits the excitement and celebration of today. It's impossible for you to look back from where you're going to be in 10, 20, or 40 years and see what really mattered. So I have one final thought for you, and it begins uh, with the end. A long-serving board member uh, and mentor of mine uh, died recently, um, and at his funeral on December 12th, uh, I attended a service that was packed with family, friends, uh, and business associates. Not to diminish his accomplishments in leading one of the most successful privately held companies in the U.S., but Fred Caston's memorial service was not filled with a resuscitation of his, of his substantial business success. What he did. It was a celebration of who he was, of how he engaged with family, friends, coworkers, and employees. 
And on your life journey, you will be challenged to stay true to who you are. Fred's service closed with these words from a Tim McGraw song, and they seem appropriate to guide you on your way today. So don't take for granted the love that this life gives you. When you all get where you're going, don't forget to turn around and help the next one in line. Always stay humble and kind. So thank you and congratulations to the class of 2020. Thank you again, Mr. Sheehy, for those wonderful words. Earning the designation of class respondent is truly an honor. To introduce today's class respondent, I'd like to invite to the podium Dr. Blake Wentz, professor and chair of the Civil and Architectural Engineering and Construction Management Department. Dr. Wentz. Morning, everybody. Uh, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to be here to introduce this year's class respondent, Reed. Now, I am not surprised he is the respondent because in his career here at MSOE, he is what I like to call an overachiever. Reed is about to be the graduate of our civil engineering program. This program is actually fairly new here on campus. I first met him as a sophomore when he came into my office with a group of his friends and said that they had a great idea. They told us that we need to start a brand new specialty in our department in transportation engineering, and I need to do it in the next six months. Uh, I was a bit taken aback. Uh, it was something that was not on our radar, something we were not even thinking about, and frankly, I had no idea how to do it. I am not a civil engineer. I looked around, we had no transportation engineering faculty on staff, so the panic set in. But Reed, being the overachiever that he is, was about 10 steps ahead of that game. When I asked, well, what are we gonna do about this? He actually had already looked at what other schools were doing, had already mapped out what classes were needed, showed us what classes we already had, and then proved that we only needed a few extra classes to get this done. He also took it a step further and showed me people that had PhDs around town that could teach it. Now, most of my faculty will not do that level of work and not do it in that kind of a time frame, so I was clearly impressed. So, we did it. We started our first transportation specialty, and I am proud to announce today that Reed is our very first graduate. Now, I can say very first graduate because again, overachiever. He's graduating one quarter early than the rest of his classmates because again, that's what Reed does. Now, that's pretty impressive, but take it a step forward. He's not graduating with just a civil engineering degree. He's also graduating with a master's in civil engineering as well. So he will be getting two degrees here in a few minutes. Reed, you are a slacker. <laughs> but that's not all. Continuing in his level of overachieving, the next year when they were only two or three weeks into their curriculum in this new transportation specialty, uh, Reed and his team came to me again and said, well, we would like to compete in the national student competition. And I said, okay, well, again, we've never tried that, but if you're all up for the challenge, let's give it a whirl. So we did, and take a wild guess at how they finished. Yes, that's right, very first time out, they won the championship, and I was so very proud. Not only because they won, but because they took on this new role, and they defeated a team that had won five years previously in a row. And then this past fall, proving yet again how awesome they are, they proved that that was no fluke, and they are the defending back-to-back -back champions. But this is what I come to expect out of Reed, perpetual awesomeness. Now, I'm not sure if that's a word or a phrase, but just roll with it for me. But I have no doubt that going forward, Reed will continue this level of perpetual awesomeness out in the real world. I don't think he really understands how to do anything any other way. So with that, no pressure. I really hope the speech you're going to give here is going to be awesome. 
So ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to, or to present to you today our class respondent, Mr. Reed Johns. Thank you, Dr. Wentz. I am truly honored to be representing the winter class of 2020. They say the road to engineering success goes through Milwaukee, specifically MSOE. I'd have to agree. How would you describe the MSOE ride? Like the first time you got behind the wheel? A little scary, but you found your way? Like a road trip where you learn more and more about your fellow road trippers with each passing day? Just hoping that Hank over there has the directions straight? Like a Lewis and Clark expedition, discovering more and more about yourself in your course of study with every passing day? So what memories were made on the trip? Do you have a couple of professors that know you and your classmates a little too well? A couple of midnight lab report light bulb moments? A few admirals, brewers, or bucks games to tell the friends back home about? A few industry experiences at an internship or two? Now that the MSWE journey is coming to an end, What's next? Last time I checked, they say that the placement rate is near 100%, and the starting salary, the best in Wisconsin. For many of you, work starts in a week or two, or for me, Monday morning. Sure, it's a different vehicle, but you're prepared to drive it. You've spent hundreds of hours in the lab, You've learned how to prioritize and manage your time accordingly. Met deadlines, satisfied, and dare I say impressed your senior design clients. You will continue to learn through your experienced coworkers, but you have the fundamentals under your belt. You may hit some rough stretches along the road here or there, but you're pre as prepared as anyone to take on those challenges. But what about when success comes your way, like right now? Don't act surprised, embrace the moment, count your blessings, and take a moment to remember and treasure the journey and those who have helped you, enabled you, and shaped your journey, your parents, your professors, your friends, your family, your MSOE regents, your God. Dream big, work hard, and live your mission. And don't forget to smile once in a while too. Thank you and God bless. Would the candidates from the Civil, Architectural, Engineering, and Construction Management Department please rise and remain standing? Dr. Baumgartner, it is my pleasure on behalf of the faculty and staff of the department to present to you the candidates for the following degrees. Bachelors of Science in Civil Engineering, Masters of Science in Civil Engineering, and Masters of Science in Architectural Engineering. Will the following candidates for these degrees please rise? Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, 
Bachelor of Science in Software Engineering, Master of Science in Engineering, Master of Science in Perfusion. Dr. Baumgartner, the EECS faculty is pleased to present these candidates for their respective degrees. Candidates for degrees in industrial engineering, mechanical engineering, and general engineering, please do stand. Vice President Baumgartner, upon the recommendation of their respective program faculty, I present to you the candidates for the following degrees. Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Engineering. Would the candidates from the School of Nursing please stand? Dr. Baumgartner, it is my pleasure to present on behalf of the faculty of the School of Nursing, the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Would the graduates of the Raiders School of Business please stand and remain standing? Dr. Baumgartner, on behalf of the Raider School of Business and its faculty and staff, I am pleased to present to you candidates for the following degrees. The Masters in Business Administration, the Masters in Science and Engineering Management, and the Bachelors in Business Administration. Congratulations, everybody. President Walls, the academic records of these candidates have been reviewed by MSOE's faculty under the authority of the Executive Education Council. As recommended by their school and department chairpersons and as verified by the registrar, I present these candidates for the bachelor's and master's degrees in their respective fields of study. Candidates, by reason of satisfactory completion of your educational program as prescribed by the faculties of the university, and with the authority invested in the office of the President by the Board of Regents under the charter granted to the Milwaukee School of Engineering by the State of Wisconsin. I hereby confer on you, respectively, as presented by your department chairpersons, the following degrees. Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Biomolecular Engineering, Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Bachelor of Science in Software Engineering, Master of Science in Architectural Engineering, Master of Business Administration, Master of Science in Civil Engineering, Master of Science in Engineering, Master of Science in Engineering Management, and Master of Science in Perfusion, together with all of their honors, rights, and privileges, as well as their duties and responsibilities. Congratulations to each of you on this tremendous accomplishment. And now you can present yourself for your degrees. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Engineering, Jared Kropp, Hortonville, Wisconsin. Receiving the Bachelor of Business Administration, Aditya Baura, Baneshwar, India, graduating with honors. Evan Kearns, Farmington Hills, Michigan, graduating with high honors. Cole Edward McEffrish, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Thank you. 
Mac G. Stevens, St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering, Lucy Happ, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, Alexis Nicole Burkholder, Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. Dawn Bourgeois, Burlington, Wisconsin. Alexander T. McCassie, Franksville, Wisconsin. Eric Mitchell, Elgin, Illinois. Isaac Yisak Naramatsu, Rancho Cucamonga, California. Christian Scott Sartler, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Brandon Alexander Sanger, West Bend, Wisconsin. Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Engineering, Thomas James Porter, Hartford, Wisconsin. Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering, Anshu Argawal, India. Michael A. Barbeau, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Mackenzie J. Deloy, Baltic, South Dakota. Jomana Karam, Kuwait. Francis Marie O'Malley, Chicago, Illinois. Samuel Oriati, Buffalo Grove, Illinois, graduating with honors. Jing Li Wei, Beijing, China. Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Logan Jackson Anderson, Albany, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Alan G. Fox, Franklin, Wisconsin. Kayla Godinski, Kewaskum, Wisconsin. Elizabeth Hearn, Urbana, Iowa. Christopher M. Hippert, Franklin, Wisconsin. Samuel Hosh, Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Andrew Justin, Dodgeville, Wisconsin. Bing Tian Piao, Qingdao, China, graduating with honors. Brendan Mitchell Reed, Brookfield, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Mark Robert Rooney, Wheaton, Illinois. Patrick Schmidt, Hardland, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Ashlyn Schursel, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Justin Patrick Spencer, Pittston, Maine. Peter Tamblin, Franklin, Wisconsin. Krista A. Vanderwerf, Sussex, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Blaine Vollmer, Plover, Wisconsin, graduating with high honors. Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Nursing, D. 
Diyar Marzan Awal, Millbrae, California, graduating with honors. <laughs> Taryn Jankowski, Muskego, Wisconsin, graduating with high honors. Emma Madeline Kanzen, Grafton, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Tierney L. McBride, Loyal, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Anthony Minotti, Louisville, Kentucky, graduating with honors. Meg Ann Ope, Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Amanda Raquel Rockmore, Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Riley Dunn Schmidt, McGuanago, Wisconsin, graduating with honors. Megan Stow, Alexandria, Virginia, graduating with high honors. Bettina S. Williams, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> Receiving the Bachelor of Science in Software Engineering, Letty Rakowski, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, graduating with high honors. <laughs> Receiving the Master of Science in Architectural Engineering, Yazid Almayzaid, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Receiving the Master of Business Administration, Aliyah Nelson, Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Allison K. Razon, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Zachary Simpson, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Receiving both the Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering with high honors and the Master of Science in Civil Engineering, Reed Johns, Marcasan, Wisconsin. <laughs> Receiving the Master of Science in Engineering, Sudan Shu Dixit, Bangalore, India. Samuel Thomas Schweitzer, St. Charles, Illinois. <laughs> Receiving the Master of Science in Engineering Management, Mark Adamzak, Cedarburg, Wisconsin. <laughs> Paul Belmer, Mequon, Wisconsin. Jake Bradley, Appleton, Wisconsin. Eric William Dubay, Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Receiving the Master of Science in Perfusion, Warren T. Anderson, Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. Nicholas Cress, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Isaac Elias Pacheco, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Alyssa Jean Ruman, Boulder, Colorado. Mark Alexander Scullion, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. and Brett Wagner, Centennial, Colorado. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the class of 2020.
Now to present an award of achievement to one of this morning's graduates, it's a pleasure to introduce to you a graduate of MSOE's class of 2002, past president and current member of the MSOE Alumni Association Board, Mr. Brandon Rosner. Mr. Rosner. Dr. Walls, honored guests, faculty, fellow alumni, parents and friends, we're here today to pay tribute to and celebrate with and welcome our newest MSOE alumni, the winter class, graduating in spring of 2020. In keeping with our tradition, the MSOE Alumni Association recognizes at each of these commencements a very special student who has made his time or her time during their hectic schedule to serve as a leader in the university, community activities, as well as achieving additional academic success. Candidates for the Student Alumni Achievement Award are nominated by the respective academic departments, and then the entire graduating class selects from among its peers the student who is most deserving of this prestigious award. Today, we're proud to announce that the recipient of this award is Blaine Vollmer. Blaine, will you please join me on stage, please? <laughs> Blaine is an alumnus of Stevens Point Area Senior High School, and he's graduating today with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. While at MSOE, Blaine kept a very busy schedule in a variety of ways. He was involved with the SAE Super Mileage Vehicle Team and served as the engineering manager and engine lead. He worked with the group to design and develop a new gasoline vehicle powertrain and helped lead the team to take home fourth place at the International SAE Competition where they had a machine that had 1,112 miles per gallon, the school record. In addition to this pretty neat achievement, gets a little more uh, mileage than my car, um, Blaine participated in the MSOE chapter of ASME, notably as the chapter vice president past two years, where in this capacity, he coordinated and organized its industry speaker series to foster connections between companies in the Milwaukee area with MSOE students. In addition to classes, Blaine has tutored students in a wide range of subjects at the Raider Center of Academic Success, using his academic knowledge to help the next class of engineering students. Off campus, Blaine has also gained valuable experience. The summer after his sophomore year, Blaine interned at Milwaukee Tool, where he worked to develop new power tools. And this past summer, Blaine was at the Argonne National Laboratory in Lamont, Illinois, where he worked as a research intern. And there he developed a computational fluid dynamics program to simulate and study acoustic levitation. He then continued his work on acoustic levitation with his MSOE senior design project. Blaine's post MSOE plans are to pursue a PhD in aerospace or mechanical engineering and continue studying fluid mechanics. Blaine, on behalf of the fellow 25,000 MSOE alumni worldwide, I commend you on your accomplishments and wish you continued success in your future endeavors. So I'm gonna hand you this award. And to each of you graduating today, congratulations. You're a very talented group of men and women. There's many exciting opportunities that await you across the world as an MSOE alum. As you move across the country and across the world, I hope that you'll make an effort to stay in touch with your classmates and back at the university here at MSOE. There are alumni located all across the nation and we have regional alumni chapters. So there's gonna be new colleagues and future friends from MSOE that will never be more than an email, a text, or a phone call away. I hope you'll wear your MSOE alumni lapel pins proudly with great pride as you serve as a lifetime ambassador of MSOE. Good luck to you. Thanks. Graduates, I would also like to welcome you to your new role as alumni of this great university with all the responsibilities and privileges that accompany this honor and distinction. However, I'm confident that you did not make it to this day alone and were supported by parents and grandparents, siblings and other relatives, as well as spouses, significant others, and your peers. 
Graduates, please join me in thanking all of those who, who have supported your educational journey here at MSOE. Thank you to all for being a part of this special day. I would ask that the audience please remain in your seats until the academic procession, including the graduates, have left the arena. We will all rejoin one another in the upper level in the field house for a reception at which time you can congratulate your graduate personally. There are students available to assist with directions if the need should arise. Now to conclude today's ceremony, Dean Cusman will provide the benediction. Dean Cusman. Graduates, may you all be guided and blessed in the decisions you will make, the passions you will pursue, and the long and happy lives you are all sure to lead. May your hearts, lives, and endeavors always reflect everything that is good and true. And may your hope be a light within you that you carry into each new day of your very bright futures. Congratulations to you all. A warm and sincere congratulations to each and every one of you. Amen.